When they tell me go and break a leg, uh, this music with it without me, boy, still gonna be in the second seconds like a naughty boy. Feeling uh, like I'm balling, boy. We can taste, can't let my heart harden, boy. I need a side to the main dish, a problem, boy. I'll be turning down girls with the fire, boy. Side to the main, do what we wanna do. Two in the food, who really wanna do? Side to the main, who really wanna do? Who will follow you? Never cheat the boy, we do. We can number two. Uh, them sons of the follow, we star four quarters, won't change for a dollar. Uh, I put it on my mama, I ain't got no words like a cool number two. Spread the life like a EMC, no biggie to me. That you can do a B.I.G. Till you ain't got a line like a DMV. You rappers are neon green, you kind of knowledge. Wanna be GMCs, but overdose on Christ to your G.O.D. G.O.D., that's what you see on me. Now turn up. They know when we pull up, pull up. Where they work in the fifth, I can pull up. Well, good morning, Crossover Church. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Don't sit so far back. Come on up here and join us. Anybody excited about being here this morning? Come on, make some noise for Jesus if you're really excited about being here this morning. If you came to bless his name, make some noise. Let him hear you praise his name. Here we go. Bless. 
said be your name in the land that is plentiful where the streams of abundance flow blessed be your name blessed be your name when i'm found in the desert place though i walk through the wilderness blessed be your name come on say every blessing Closes in, Lord. Still, I will say, Hey, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Be name. Yeah. Come on, blessed be the blessed name. Be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Be say, name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Oh, blessed be the name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in this offering. Blessed be your name. Come on, everybody all over the room, say it. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to pray and when the darkness closes in lord still i will say hey blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your name say blessed be the name oh blessed be your name oh blessed be the name oh blessed be your name Oh, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. One more time, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be your name. Oh, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Oh, blessed be your name. Oh, blessed be your name. Oh, blessed be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, Lord. You give and take away, Lord. You give and take away, and my heart will choose to say, Blessed be your name. Everybody say, You give and take away, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Oh, blessed be your name, yeah. Lord, you give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, oh, blessed be, blessed be, Lord, you give and take away, give and take away, my heart will choose to say, oh, blessed be your name, one more time, Lord, you give and take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Come on, sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Say, Blessed be the name. Blessed be your name. Oh, blessed be the name. Oh, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Blessed be your name, yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord, yeah. Blessed be your glory. One more time, sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be your name, yeah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Come on, bless his name. Come on, bless his name like he really deserves it. Bless his name. Listen, if you've been watching the news, as long as you ain't been up underneath the rock the last week, you've seen some of the tragedies that our nation is going through right now. And regardless of your personal opinion or 
what's going on has a strong political pull, regardless of all of that stuff, we as believers have a responsibility. And so as the enemy's agenda to divide people continues to per persevere, our job is to be unified as one body of Christ. Black, white, green, purple, blue, stripes, polka dot, it don't matter. Our job is to be unified as one body of Christ. And so the way we remain unified is to keep our eyes on him. Right? As if we're looking up, we can't notice the differences between us looking around. Right? We, we want our worship today to be centered around the fact that our focus is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Listen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Oh, I want to see. This is our focus this morning. Lord, I want to see you. Oh, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Say, open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. Oh, I want to see you. Oh, I want to see you. We want to see you. Shining, yeah. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your, Pour power. Out your power and love as we as cry. We cry. Holy, holy, holy. Want to see you high and lifted up. Shining, yeah. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power. Pour out Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Oh, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Sing, open the eyes. I want to see you high and lifted up. Anybody want to see him high and exalted? Come on, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power as we cry. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you high and lifted up. Shining, yeah. Pour out your power as we cry. Holy, holy, stay right there. Come on, I want to see you high lifted up, shining, yeah, yeah. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power. If we cry, holy, 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 as we cry, holy, 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 oh, as we cry, holy, 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 as we cry, holy, 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 as we cry, holy, 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 we cry. Cry. Holy, holy, yeah. Come on, holy, cry out to him as we cry. Holy, 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 holy. as we cry. Holy, 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 I want to see you. A 
Let's talk to our Father. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard your tender whisper of love in the dead of night when you tell that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am 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 you're a good good father it's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. Oh, I'm loved by you. It's who I am. Who I am. It's who I am. Who I am. It's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I. We're all searching for answers Only you provide Cause you know just what we need Before we say a word You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are Oh, I'm loved by you, yeah who I am, who I am, you're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, 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 Lord, you are perfect and I'll love you way. Yes, you are perfect in all of your ways. Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. To us. Come on, let's lift that up. Tell him. Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. Oh, Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. Come on, say it like you mean it this time. Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. Oh, Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. To You're a good, good father. To you are. Who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. Lord, I'm loved by you, yeah. It's who I am. 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 You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. Tell him he's perfect. Lord, you're perfect in all of your ways. Even when it don't look like it, you're perfect in all of your ways. I don't understand it all the time, but you're perfect in all of your ways to us. Come on, let's lift that up again. Tell him, Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. Even when the world is crazy, Lord. Even when the society's going wild, perfect in all of your ways to us. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. 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 And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am.
for being such a good father. Thank you for being perfect in all of your ways, Lord. Lord, it doesn't make sense to us all the time. It don't feel good all the time, Lord, but your word teaches us that your ways are not our ways, Lord. And your thoughts are not our thoughts, Lord. And just as the heavens are above the earth and the rain falls from the heaven on down to the earth, Lord, that's how your thoughts come to us, Lord. Remind us to look to the hills because that's where our help comes from, Lord. We got to look up. We can't look to the left and we can't look to the right and we can't look around us, Lord. We are helpless without you, Lord. We're not asking for monies. We're not asking for mansions or Mercedes, Lord. We want your presence. Send your Holy Spirit, Lord. Heal us, Lord, in our time of brokenness. Lord, thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for meeting us here. Thank you for being a good father to us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Listen, why don't you all take a second? And we always do meet and greet right here, but I want you to, to, to look at somebody that don't look like you, that got a different skin color, their hair is different than yours. Say what's up to that person and tell them that you're happy to see them and welcome them to Crossover Church. You're going to see some boxes out in the lobby over the next couple of months. Start bringing those items in to help all of our kids get off school to a great start. Right, guys? Yes. Yes. All right. You guys have a great day. We'll see you at the Back to School Jam. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Welcome to Crossover Church. to have you join us today at Crossover. If this is your first, second, or even your third time, you are considered one of our VIP guests. If you could fill out one of the connection cards near you and then drop it off over at our VIP station at the entrance of the church after service, we can hook you up with a free gift after church. Where are all my married people at? Let me hear you make some noise. That nice looking gentleman on the keys is my husband. And this Friday at 7 p.m., we are having our marriage boot camp right here at Crossover Church. It is free, guys, so make sure you take advantage. Sign up and register 
at the website at www.crossoverchurch.org. We will see you there. Single people, we did not forget about you. We have an event made just for you guys, July 17th, next Sunday at University Lanes from 6 to 9. Check your bulletin for more details. Activators, let me hear you make some noise. Activators are people who volunteer and serve with us here at Crossover. We love our volunteers, and we don't just want to say it, we want to show it. So this Saturday at 11 a.m., we are having an event for you at Game Time in Ybor City. Come have some fun with us. We're going to take care of you guys and pay for you. Feel free to bring family and friends, but they're going to have to take care of their own. But come on and have everyone join in the fun. I'm Rebecca. Enjoy the rest of the service, and welcome to week two of Summer Fun at the Movies. Hey, Crossover family, what's going on? It's Pastor T. I'm actually up here in Lansing, Michigan at Jerome's Church at City Life, having an amazing weekend up here doing some teaching and preaching and some music. Um, but at the same time, uh, my heart's really heavy. And as all of us know, it's been a really tough week for our country. This past Wednesday night, we took out some time in the service and we prayed for uh, Alton Serling and, and his family and all the people affected in Baton Rouge and Little did we know later that night there would be another senseless killing. And the following night there would be five uh, Dallas police officers that would be killed. And uh, it just seems like since then everything, that if you've been on social media or watching the news, it just seems like it's just spiraling out of control. Um, so today we're going to take some time out and we are gonna, we're going to pray in, in just a few moments. And um, next Sunday uh, I'm going to be back and uh, Pastor Christopher... Uh, both of us, we're going to be uh, doing a panel and we're going to take a pause from the series. We're going to be talking about Woodlawn anyways. That was in the movie we were going to look at. But instead of doing it the way we were going to do it, we're going to have a panel and really have a discussion with some, some leaders in our city and be proactive because we don't want to see these things spill over into Tampa. And we know that God's given our church uh, a platform of influence. And we have that because we're a multi-ethnic church. We're diverse. We have uh, credibility to speak into this, and we believe that a church like ours can help be an answer to this. We know that the gospel and Jesus um, brings hope and reconciliation and change. And so uh, next Sunday, be here. Invite some people. Um, it's it's going to be amazing. And be praying. Be praying as we can be peacemakers and be praying for justice. So I love you guys, and uh, I'll see you next week. Amen, amen. Well, we're at that point in the service where we extend our worship, even though we started uh, off with worship uh, early and we get a chance to sing and join in together collectively or corporately uh, in praising God and worshiping God in the morning. Uh, when we start the service, we still have that opportunity to extend the worship without giving. And there are three different ways to give. Uh, many of you already know that you can give, and there's an envelope right there for you. Uh, you can also give uh, through the Secure Give app, which uh, you can actually download onto your device. Uh, we even have a kiosk outside in the lobby. Uh, however you choose to worship the Lord and let him know that he's still first in your life, uh, we celebrate that with you and invite you to participate in that now. And as the, the servers are coming to uh, help you with that, uh, I, I want to introduce myself as the, the gentleman who happens to work with the leaders uh, and the men in this house. We have a men's ministry called Fight Club. And what we've been doing with that ministry is looking at authentic manhood. And what, a, what better time to look at authentic manhood is during a time like now when this country is going through various types of issues as it relates to who we are and who we want to be. Uh, understand that our goal as a house is to put God first no matter what's going on. And when you come here, you're coming, of course, to meet Christ and to understand who Christ is in your life. But as we continue to move forward, uh, let's join together, not just in praising God, but in worshiping God and saying, God, I give you not just my life, I give you my mind and I give you my momentum as to how we fight together as believers. If you would stand with me, I'd like for us to pray, not just for the offering, but I'd like to also pray uh, for the community as a whole. 
and that we may be a united community. If you could just see yourselves out here and those looking online, if you could see the congregation, this is a beautiful demonstration of who God's kingdom is and who we are. If you look at your neighbors, you have a diverse, beautiful array of people in here representing different nationalities and ethnicities. And as Pastor Tommy has pointed out in the video, next Sunday there's going to be an opportunity to discuss some of the painful things that we're watching. Uh, but, but as we're true to our God and we really understand that he gave us his son to make the ultimate sacrifice, the only blood spilling that really matters is what Jesus did on the cross. I invite you to join me in prayer and worship. Not that we ignore what's happening in the world, but we unite around what, what really matters, and that is what we believe in Christ Jesus. Father, thank you for everyone who's going to uh, extend their worship and their giving today. Uh, thank you for an amazing series uh, in which you've given our leaders an opportunity to take what Hollywood has done and still bring it back to what really matters in your word. Uh, thank you for those who have unrest in their heart, who's troubled by the things that they've seen. Thank you for those who feel like they should speak out. Thank you for those who feel like they don't know what to say and they, they're not sure if they can relate. But thank you that the only relationship that matters is first, that with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And if we can have direction based on what the word says that we should do on behalf of our brother, may it extend not just in our giving, but it extend in our actions. And may we as a community, more importantly, be a representation of your light. In your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'd like for us to also add to that worship as you return to your seat. The story, or really the testimony through song or hip-hop from our very own JL. Good morning, church. Yeah, today I'm going uh, to do a song that will share my um, a testimony. And I know right now we're going through some rough times. And I pray that this song is used as a tool, as a ministry tool to your life. All right? Let's go. Clap for me. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. And it's just a brand new day. There's no more yesterday. And it's a brand new day. Yesterday, the storm left myself straight. Yesterday, all my dreams got washed away Yesterday, everything I love just went away Yesterday, all my hope just went away The morning came, the sun just overcame No rain, so so rain The sky, so so rain So free, so relief The light I can breathe So God rest me for the mother with the pit And now right here, just singing like Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning Yes, and it's a brand new day Thank you, Jesus. There's no more yesterday. Yes. Come on, let's go. And it's a brand new day. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. And it's a brand new day. Yes. There's no more yesterday. Yes. And it's a brand new day. And it still feels good, even though I'm still feeling bruised and abused. But I still feel abused. So thankful for my heart fully moved. The first blessing was strength that should be down with peace. Who ain't no worries on my knees, living everything from his feet. Had no worries, zero faith. Getting back everything that I lost. This is real, for for mine. God does anything he wants. Matter of fact, give my family back. And just so much more. Dear fuck the war, I got restored like Joel and fill the door. But everything that was mine, I didn't get it back. I was to be thankful until the tickets bad. Since everything in the world it comes and goes. God is forever. Everything goes like money and clothes. My had to be real. So hey, they pay bills, man. I hate storms. Even though it's me strong, strong under the force field. Can never be complacent. Hey, bad situations. That's my motivation. The one I learned the hard way. Come help me see. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. And it's a brand new day. Yes. Hey. There's no more yesterday. Thank you, Lord. And it's a brand new day. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. And it's a brand new day. Yes, there's no more yesterday. Yes, and it's a brand new day. What you doing, lean down, stand up on your feet. God, you can rate a person that lays in your feet. You can rate a warrior, arms ten tall, with ability and strength that breaks through walls. Yes. Lord, yo, I'm telling you now, 
It's enough, I'm telling you now that we got it's a beautiful day. I'm telling you now, tomorrow we'll be seeing good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, and it's a brand new day. There's no more yesterday. Yes, thank you, Lord. It's a brand new day. I help and hope just come for the Lord. God bless. I've always wanted to be a dad. And let me tell you, I love it. Did you do another drawing of our family? Uh -huh. That's me and Dylan and Mommy. And over here, far away, is you. I love how you drew my hair. That's poop. Well, it's well drawn. OK, I'm their stepdad. The way I see it, anyone can be a father. But not everyone has the patience or the devotion to be a dad. Daddy! Talk to you. Oh, does he? Super to make your acquaintance. I'm not going to give you my social security number. Cholesterol, 180. Credit score, 758. Very proud of that. Yeah, I guess I could pick you up. I mean, kids, at the end of the day, they know who's been around and who. Holy. <laughs> Well, you're kind to say that. Thank you. The king received word that his dominion was being ruled over by some curly-headed step king with good credit. Oh, no. Sounds like your dad's spending quite a yarn. Oh, actually, it's getting late. Aww. Good night, my little magical cherubs. Eskimo kisses. Who wants good night tickles? <laughs> good night back scratches. Oh, hey, who wants 20 bucks? Hey! What? Hey, kids. There's someone here now that I hope you guys can learn to love. I thought you were talking about me. Oh, but you're not a dog, Brad. Why is he looking at me like that? No. So what do we got going on over here, man? It's a treehouse. We've only been at it for about two months. Brad, Dad finished the treehouse for you! Hey, hey, be mad! I hope it's up to code. Oh, no, watch out, be Brad! Brad. It's a pony, Dusty! Not bad. Take her out, see what she can do. Remember, one down, four up. Everyone knows it's one down, four up. One down, one down, one down! Oh my god! So I'll just be grateful nobody got hurt, okay? I got hurt! Brad, just stay still, I'll get you. No, please just go and get a shirt on. One lucky fan is gonna get a chance to shoot from half court. This one's for Dylan and Megan and Sarah and Dylan. There's nothing but that. Crossover family was good. Welcome to week two of our new series, Summer Fun at the Movies. And Jesus was known for telling stories. They're actually called parables. And he would use them and talk about different people and circumstances. And he would engage people and pull out a spiritual truth. He would use it as an illustration. So that's really exactly what we're doing with this series. We're using modern day parables, movies, because you know that movies tell a story, right? Movies can have us on the edge of our seat. They can make us laugh. They can make us cry. They can inspire us. They can make us dream. They can challenge us. And I know that all of you have been watching a movie and at some point you've seen some spiritual truths in it, right? So that's what we're doing with this series um, today. And, and so today's movie is, is it's, it's a comedy. It's, it's funny. It's called Daddy's Home. You guys just saw the trailer for it. And even though it's funny though at its root, it has a really serious problem. It's really actually a sad problem. And the reality is there's so many broken homes in our culture today. Uh, recent statistics actually show that over half of the teenagers that are growing up are now growing up in broken homes. And so in the urban community, it's even much higher than that. Back when I was a youth pastor here at Crossover about 15 years ago, most of the kids were unchurched. That means that they didn't go to church, their parents didn't go to church, uh, they didn't go to our church or any church. The only place that those kids came was to crossover. And so out of those kids, man, there was 85 to 90% of them were growing up without a dad. For a lot of them, I was like a father figure to them and I was just a couple of years older than them. And it, it was just heartbreaking to see how much brokenness there was. Uh, President Obama, he said this. He said, we know the statistics that children who grow up without a father are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crime. 
nine times more likely to drop out of schools and 20 times more likely to end up in prison. They're more likely to have behavioral problems, uh, run away from home, or become teenage parents themselves. And the foundations of our community are weaker because of it. Right, it's even what our own president says, and the statistics are, are overwhelming. So, so how did we get here? And, and what's, the, what's the solution to it? So today we're gonna to talk about foundations of what we build our lives on, and what we build our families on, what we build our, our homes on as well. Now, in, in the movie Daddy's Home, um, Brad, he wanted to be a father more than anything. I mean, that was like his life's goal. He wanted to be a dad. He was willing to do whatever he could do to be the best stepdad in the world. And he was trying to win the heart uh, of his stepkids. And, and they were tough. They were tough at first, but he was making, he was making progress until, boom, their real dad showed up, Dusty. And Dusty, man, Dusty was, he was a rock star, man. He had it going on. But at the same time, <laughs> Dusty was all about himself. He was self-centered. He was selfish. And he left his family to go chase his dreams. And then after a pair, I guess his dreams didn't work out so well, he wanted to come back home and get his family back. But he came back and found that his family moved on. His wife remarried, and they now had a stepdad, and... And his wife was married to this guy that was, you know, a family man. He was stable. He was successful. He had a good job. So here he comes back in that mix, and he's trying, he's trying to smooth talk Brad. You know, he's just trying to get in there. And, and Brad's convinced, like, oh, man, you know, Dusty, man, he's a good dude. That's my man. We see eye to eye. We're going to work on this together, dad and stepdad. We, we can do this. It's all right. And it's funny because Brad's wife... Um, she knows Dusty. She knows Dusty. He was like, nah, you don't, you, you don't know this guy. Like, it's not what you think. And Brad was like, nah, it's cool. Like, I got this, right? So, you know, what Dusty was really trying to do was just win his family back. And Brad kind of got the, the wool pulled over his eyes. But it all kind of was revealed one morning, the next morning, at breakfast. Oh. Good morning, Dusty. Hey. You're up and at him. Yeah, I got up early and did a quick 20 miles, and then I whipped up a pan of piping hot cinnamon rolls for my family. And I made one for you two. Wow. Very impressive. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Morning, gang. Here you go. Smell candy. Our real dad is a super, super duper good cook. Uh huh. Here you go, guys. Yeah, looks an awful lot like Cinnabon. Well, thank you, Brad. What a nice thing to say. Mm -hmm. It tastes exactly like Cinnabon. Back. Same shape, same swirl, same frosting. Well, now you're starting to embarrass me, but I do appreciate the compliment. Morning, Sarah Bear. Morning. Hey, listen, guys. You know, families can be ever-growing and changing things, but there's someone here now that I hope you guys can learn to love, okay? <whistles> Come here, boy! A doggy! Yay! You brought a dog home? Yeah, well, is that a problem? I mean, you seemed really into it while I was teeing it up. Dusty, how old is that thing? I guess him to be around 15. I mean, I found him this morning living in a storm drain. I named him Tumor because of how much he grows on me. <laughs> Tumor, because he grows on you, right? That's kind of like sin, right? It just grows on you. <laughs> it's not good. But see, you know what? When, when someone builds their foundation on themselves, like, like a Dusty, you can't trust them, right? You can't trust them. I, I know a lot of us, we've been there before. I'll tell you, I know I was. Back before I had a, a relationship with Christ, I'll tell you right now, you couldn't trust me. I mean, I was all about myself. I was selfish. I was self-centered. And I lied to everybody. I lied to my parents. I lied to my teachers. I lied to my friends. I lied to my teammates that I played basketball with. I lied to my girlfriends. I mean, you couldn't trust me at all because my foundation was all about me. My foundation was faulty. In the New Testament, Paul, he writes a couple letters to young Timothy. That was kind of like his spiritual son. He was, he was mentoring him. And in his second letter, in chapter 3, he stresses to Timothy. He says, man, build your life on God's word. And, and he says this, and this is starting in verse 16. He says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what's wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong, 
and it teaches us to do what is right. Verse 17, it says, God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So a little bit before that, verse 14 says, you must remain faithful to the things that you've been taught. Remain faithful to God's word. And so I know that maybe some of you that are here today, some of you that are watching this, um, you grew up and you learned some things about God's word. Some of you grew up around church or you know, you went to Sunday school or VBS like we recently had, and you learned some things about God's Word. And maybe there was a season in your life where you were regularly going to church and you learned some things, but, you know, then you kind of maybe faded, faded out. Or, or maybe some of you are watching, maybe you've never really learned much before about God's Word. Maybe this is really your first time or the first season of your life for you to really be learning about God's Word and beginning to, you know, build that as the foundation uh, in your life. But, but you know, either way, uh, whether you grew up learning about God's Word or you didn't, uh, we live in a culture that's constantly evolving, a culture that's constantly changing, and a culture that's constantly about what's next, what's next, what's next. And, you know, everything is just moving at this super fast speed. And so, yeah, there's always some ways in life that we need to keep growing, we need to keep learning, gaining new knowledge, uh, doing things better, we're maturing, absolutely. But then there's some things in life that need to remain constant, like us putting our foundation in God's Word. Now, we can keep learning more about God's Word. We can keep growing, learning new things, and, and we should be doing that. And there's all kinds of different classes that we have here at Crossover. There's things that we're trying to do to equip you to grow in God's Word, to help you know your family foundation to be stronger that we're going to talk about in just a minute. Um, and you should be doing that in your own home life, your personal time at home, reading the scripture regularly, absolutely all that. But still at the end of the day, what God's word, the essentials that you're learning and that you're committing to, those things should not be changing. They should be a constant position. You should be grounded in that, um, that you're not changing what you believe. You're not like, okay, well, now I'm starting to believe a little bit of this because of what I watched on YouTube or, you know, there's so many people that are constantly changing what they believe about God. So here's, here's Paul reminding young Timothy, like, man, don't change what I first taught you. You know, a little bit earlier in the chapter, he says, look at my life. Look at all the things that I, I've done. Look at all the places I went and preached and the churches I planted. And you've seen all the struggles and the things I've gone to. And still to this day, I'm still remaining faithful. I'm remaining constant. My foundation is in God's Word. My roots are in God's Word. Because if we're not careful, sometimes we can, we can change. We can forget our roots. We can forget our foundation. We can forget some of the things that we learned um, in, in God's Word and how we're grounded. So Dusty, he forgot that his family mattered, you know, but he forgot, man, I got two kids. I, I got a wife. And then he tried to come back and see that, man, they moved on. Now, on the flip side, you, you had Brad there. He was grounded. He was a solid family man. He was a stable guy. Now, when Dusty showed up on the scene, Brad, in some ways, started to forget who he was. He started to try to act like he was something else. And we have to be careful when we get in certain new situations, maybe at a new job or, you know, maybe some new friends or we just get in different circumstances or situations that we don't forget who we are. That suddenly, oh, we're, we're this person at our job, and then we're this person, you know, at church. Or we're this person over here with this group of people, but we're now a different person when we're with this group of people over here. You know, if your foundation is in God's Word, it's in His truth, we should be the same person all, all across the board. Now, yeah, there's different ways that we relate and share and talk in different circumstances and situations, but ultimately we don't change who we are. So Brad began to to change who he was a little bit, to try to fit in and compete with Dusty. He tried to act like he was somebody that he wasn't. He tried to act like he could ride a motorcycle when he really couldn't. I don't know if that's a good idea, Brad. Dusty! It's vibrating up into my shoulders. Hey, it's okay, Brad. Look, she's a lot of bike, man. No, I'm good. Why don't you go back in and take that shower so you can get a shirt on? Oh, you got it. Hey, you look good on that, man. Remember, one down, four up. Dusty, everyone knows. It's one down, four up. Ah! One down, one down, one down, one down! Ah! Brad? Oh. oh, my God! 
Brad, are you all right? No, not all right. I'm in the wall. Jeez, Brad, I thought you said you could ride. I can ride, okay? Would you get a shirt on? So I'll just be grateful nobody got hurt, okay? I got hurt! All right, Brad, just stay still. I'll get you. No, 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 no. No, don't do anything. Would you please just go and get a shirt on? Just calm down, all right? All right, what's up, Crossover? This has been an incredible message already. Pastor Tommy just kind of came, laid the foundation for us, got us focused as it relates to this movie, Daddy's Home. That clip that you just saw, the motorcycle, it is one of the funniest clips on the planet because after this, after he his, his motorcycle flies up and he gets locked up into the, the, to the wall of the, in the house and all of that, the whole rest of the movie, if y'all haven't seen it, and this may be a little spoiler alert, I'm sorry, but he, but he literally rides through the rest of the movie with his car uh, ceiling dented down, and they're riding, and the kids have to, it's, it's hilarious. You got to go see the movie. But really quickly, as we kind of shift gears a little bit in the focus here, and as I, I have the, the, the burden, if you would, of, of sort of helping to close this message out and give us some, some, some very practical tools about uh, what God will want us to hear uh, from this message. And, and again, I want to emphasize something that Pastor Tommy shared last week and even this week, and that is uh, that in biblical times, Jesus used parables. And in our context today, I believe that God can speak to us through movies. He can speak to us through movies. Um, some people would even try to have you believe that all we need is the word. We don't need all these movies and that's just entertainment. But trust me, God can speak through whatever he wants to speak through to get his message to us. Watch this y'all real quick. Right here behind me is just a blueprint of our church where you're sitting at right now. And here's what you got to know that there's so much stuff that's going on in this building at any given point that if the foundation, let everybody say foundation. Go ahead, foundation. Hey, hey, you right there on the sixth row. I just saw you. You didn't listen to me. Say foundation. There you go. All right. Thank you for paying attention. Listen, this building is built on a solid foundation. If the foundation of anything isn't solid and firm, the whole thing crumbles. And that's how I want to close this message out today because as this message, as this movie is about family and about homes and about houses, you got to understand that as Pastor Tommy shared that our lives are built upon a foundation, our families have to be built upon a solid foundation. And Jesus lays this out in, in no uncertain terms and in very clear terms. Watch what he says in Matthew chapter number seven. Matter of fact, it's going to be right there on your screens uh, as I'm reading it. Watch what he says. Jesus says, that anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise. It's like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters flood rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on a bedrock. Watch this. But anyone who hears my teachings and doesn't obey it is like the person who builds their house on sand. So Jesus really clearly paints this picture of, of, of really sort of three absolutes and three variables. Let me break it down a little bit. Everybody say, break it down, break it down, break it down. Okay. I'm glad you said that. I'm going to break it down a little bit. Watch this. The first thing that Jesus contrasts is, is here. He says that there are two kinds of people. Number one, there's the kind that hears the word. And then there's a the kind that hears the, that actually does the word. So, so in, in essence, both groups hear the word, but only one group responds and actually does the word. And so what we want to do is we want to, we don't want to just hear about family life and hear about good houses. We want to actually apply the right knowledge and the right information of what it means to have a good home and a good house. The second thing that Jesus does is he talks about how we build our houses and the two foundations that we can kind of uh, put our houses on. The first one he says is that we can put our house on a rock. Number two, he says we can put our house on sand. Now here's what's interesting. When you look at this parable and you kind of actually study it out, you discover that on the external, both houses actually look very similar to each other. From the outside looking in, they look the same. But when you look deeper at what they're built on, you discover that one house is built on the rock. And in this context, Jesus is saying he is the rock. Oh, that's, oh, that's so good. It says he is the rock. And there's so many scriptures. I could give you all about 20 different scriptures that show us that God himself identifies himself through scripture and through, through understanding that he himself is the rock. So he's saying, listen, you can build yourself on the rock or B, you can build your house on sand. Now, what is sand? Sand moves. 
Sand shifts. And so what he's saying is, he's saying he's likened sand to our opinions. He's likened sand uh, to, to those things that change. Our, ec our economics change, our salaries change. He, he's talking about our relationships change. All those things that can shift and move in life. He's saying, don't build your house on that. Build it on me. Now, why does that, why does that matter in terms of family? Because here it is. As a husband, as a father, I can tell you that, watch this, y'all, there's so much stuff that happens in life that if you build it on your opinion, all is going to crumble. If you build it on your, your salary, your salary is going to change. But when you build it on the rock, you put it on something that's stable. And watch what Jesus says. He says the real difference is going to come that if it's on the rock or if it's on sand, when the storms come, somebody say storms. Oh, that's so good. When stuff comes to try to knock the house down, if the foundation is stable, watch this, y'all, it ain't going to move. Oh, my wife and I, we, we've had some stuff to come and rock our world. But because our lives are built on Jesus Christ, guess what? When the winds come and the winds blow, guess what, y'all? We still stand it. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm still standing. Oh, yeah. You can still be standing when stuff comes to rock you. You can lose your job. But if your life and your family and your home is built on a rock, you can still stand. Your children can get crazy, get loco. You hear what I'm saying? But guess what? When you put the rock on them, when you build their life and their foundation on Jesus Christ, even if they stray from that, they'll always come back. So you got to know that Jesus says that you got to build it on the rock, not on sand. And so here's three things I want to give you really quickly. Three things I want to give you really quickly of how we build our lives on sand versus on the rock. Here's the first thing, y'all. We compromise our values. We compromise. We compromise our values. There are things that God's word lays out as it relates to our finances, as it relates to how we are supposed to be friends. The Bible says, watch this, that if you want friends, you must show yourself friendly. We don't, we don't often exude love. All of those different dynamics, these are values. These are moral compasses that help guide our lives. And oftentimes when it comes to our, to our, to our lives, our families, our children, how we rear ourselves in our homes, we compromise those things. Technology has totally caused us to compromise. We don't, we don't spend time talking to each other anymore. Guess what? Everybody's in their devices, right? Touch your neighbor and say, put that thing down, put it down, put it down. Yeah. Sit down with family time and quit compromising your values. Number two, number two, number two, we, we compare our visions of our families to other people. Don't be looking at somebody else's car talking about, I want a car just like that. Don't be looking at somebody else's marriage, talking about I want a marriage just like that. You're looking at their marriage from the outside, and they could be going upside each other's heads on the inside of the house. Quit comparing yourself. Quit comparing yourself. Because here's the other thing. You have no idea what kinds of pain and agony and, 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 and trials and triumphs and mountains that those folks had to climb to get to what you see. So don't get into the, to the game of comparison. Oftentimes we see our children where they want, they want, they want clothes or they want shoes or they want hairstyles, even tattoos and whatever else, only because they're comparing what somebody else has to what they have, but they have no idea that, that, that maybe, maybe quite maybe, uh, maybe that one of those people's, one of those kids' uh, family members or parents died and left them an inheritance, and they would have, they got the shoes, but they were rather having their daddy there uh, and not just the clothes. So you gotta, you gotta be sensitive to what you compare. But here's the last thing. Number one, we compromise our values. Number two, we compare our visions. But here's the last thing, y'all. We get in competition with our victories. We get in competition with other people. And listen, y'all, that old adage is true. You cannot keep up with the Joneses. Just stop trying. Run your own race. You hear me? Run your own race. And so listen, y'all, there's this clip I want y'all to see really quickly. This whole movie, uh, as Pastor Tommy talked about at the beginning, this whole movie, the two dads are competing against each other and they're compromising their values and they're comparing themselves one to another. You just saw about the dog and all of that. And, and, and then, you know, one dad tries to make Christmas in July and all of these, these kinds of things happening. And as a part of him making Christmas in July, guess what he does? He spends $18,000 on basketball seat tickets. For a basketball game, $18,000. Touch your neighbor and say, that was dumb. Yeah, that was dumb. Listen, y'all, he spends $18,000. He gets there, and everything does not go according to plan. He gets drunk at the game, and watch what happens as he tries to compare his life to the life of the other dad. It's incre incredible. Watch this.
Giants. He loves his game. Let's get it up. This one's for Dylan and Megan and Sarah and Dylan. But nothing but that. All right, so now, y'all, listen, if you're not laughing right now, you, you really need to come right now to the altar. Come on, come on, come on. If you ain't laughing, that was hilarious. You got to admit, when he threw that ball and hit that cheerleader, and she went, come on, y'all, that was funny, right? So listen, as, as we get ready to close this message out, um, there, there's a point to the madness, right? There's a point to why we are even taking this approach with the word today, and that is this, guys. Listen, when you compare when you compromise, when you get in competition, do y'all see how they dragged him out of that gym? How he looked like a fool because he was compromising? Did y'all see how, how he lost his integrity and, and his influence by, by doing things that were out of his character? Listen, let me tell y'all something. When we compromise, when we get in competition, listen, when we start comparing, the enemy puts us in a place where our homes don't look like the kind of house God wants it to look like. Our family doesn't look like the kind of family that God wants our family to look like. And I want to tell you, just like that nursery rhyme, nursery rhyme with the three little pigs, right? The enemy, that wolf, he's going to always try to come and huff and puff to blow our houses down. If your house is built on sand, in the case of the three little pigs, either with straws or sticks, guess what, y'all? It's going to crumble. But when you use it and you build it on the rock, build it out of bricks, something that is sturdy and stable... God can cause your house to, to, to stand, to be able to withstand crises, to be able to be stable. And watch this, to take it a step further, to be an example to other people of what God expects for our families. His desire is for husbands to be husbands, wives to be wives, children to be children, for homes to be healthy, safe havens, for us to learn our personalities, for us to get our values, for us to understand our value, for us to have our clear identity, and all those dynamics, things that we're supposed to learn to do in life, we're supposed to first get it at home. Let me tell y'all something. The statistics prove it. Pastor Tommy opened this message with statistics, and all of us behind this camera, in front of this camera, and even many of you that are sitting out there today, as you're listening to this message, each one of you all could quote dozens of statistics that show us that a house not built on God's rock, it won't stand. We see it in our children. We see it in society. We see it in government. We see it in our schools. Every facet of society is it can be messed up or it can be fixed when you fix the family. So listen, we're going to pray for you today, but I want to close by telling you this. And there's this little quote by Dorothy Nolte, and she says this. If a child lives with criticism, they will always learn to condemn. If a child lives with hostility, they will always learn to fight. If a child lives with ridicule, they'll learn to be shy. They live with shame, they'll feel guilty. They live with tolerance, they'll learn to be patient. If they live with encouragement, they will learn confidence, praise, appreciation, fairness, justice, security. Watch this, they will have faith. At the end of the day, it's incumbent upon you and I to be a homes that God can be pleased with. And in this context, it's not just one daddy coming home or another daddy coming home. That daddy being welcome in our home. God bless you, everybody. Good stuff. Well, um, I'm supposed to close out in prayer um, this morning, but I just want to um, give you a few of my thoughts. Is it okay if I do that? Well, the movie, was, the movie was funny. It was funny and it was very entertaining, but it did bring to light some, some, some things that I know a lot of us are dealing with. Um, no doubt in a crowd this size, many of us have to deal with some of those issues that the movie spoke about. And... Um, in a crowd this size, I know that um, a lot of us grow, grew up maybe in, a, in broken homes. Um, and what we're dealing with right now is um, your dad, my dad. Um, you're dealing with fatherlessness. Um, you're, you're dealing with those issues that step families have to deal with. 
your kids, my kids, ex-wives, ex-husbands, holidays, visitation. And that's one of the things that the movie didn't go into, but that, that's what we're dealing with right now. But So the tendency for us when we're dealing with these things is to lose sight of the big picture. We tend to revert back to our, um, our natural instincts to, to fight and to, to protect and to get yours, you know, in these situations. But in Romans 12, 18, it says, If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. But it goes on to say that never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. And not that we're to sit on our hands, because we're always supposed to work hard at, at building relationships. But we need to also remember the promises that God has for us. You know those promises where he says, you are my child. I will always be here for you. I will protect you. Trust me, I have you. Those are some of the promises that God gives to us. But we tend to forget them because um, we're in this battle. We're in a spiritual battle, as our brother James said. But remember, as Christians, we have a weapon that a lot of us don't run to right away, and that weapon is prayer. We can pray because our Father has us. So no matter what you're fighting for, remember that the, the enemy's tactic is to divide. If he can divide our families, he has a chance. If he can divide our city, our nation, if he can divide us, he can win. So remember, as we go through this day and through this next the next month or so as we deal with all of these things, let's remember we need to stand together in our adversity. And as adults, let's be an example to our children of how to deal with these issues in a biblical way. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are a God of, um, of second chances. You're a God that in spite of adversity, you are here. We thank you, Lord, that we can come together as a church and show the world how to deal with our differences in a biblical way. Help us, Lord, as we um, have conversations and as we, as we go to work and, and do life, that we never forget where we came from, that we never forget who our God is. Lord, um, we know that you are a God that is sovereign, and you see all these things. You, you're, this is no surprise or secret for you. You know what we're going through. Help us to trust you and remember the promises that you've given us. Lord, we love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Have a good week. And remember, there's uh, popcorn in the lobby. <laughs>